Hello everyone, our topic today was requested by His Shadow. We'll be going over the Exalted Marches for the Dragon Age franchise. Spoilers for Dragon Age. Da -da. Okay, so Exalted Marches are, very literally, holy wars started by the Chantry, the dominant human religion on Dragon Age's continent of Thetis. An Exalted March is a crusade, and yes, almost exactly like the ones you're thinking of called for by the Chantry against a particularly heinous foe of the Chantry. They are holy wars because A, they can only be called for and by the Chantry and thus usually gain following in soldiers from multiple countries, and B, because the backbone of any exalted march is generally made up of the Templars, the military arm of the Chantry itself. Additionally, the Chantry promises that if those who heed the call to the march die during the march, they are granted a place by the side of the Maker, the God of the Chantry. A parallel to the real-world historical crusades, during which the Church promised that crusaders who volunteered would be cleansed of their sins, whether they died out in the field or made it home. When historians look upon the history of the Chantry, they generally count nine or ten separate wars as exalted marches, but interestingly, the first of these crusades took place before the Chantry was even founded, and the second is unique in that it fielded troops only from the country of Orlais, the location of the Chantry's capital, rather than garnering military support from multiple nations as is the later norm. Which is made especially interesting because another Orlesian military campaign that takes place prior to the Second March, which shares a number of similarities with the Second March, is not considered an Exalted March. Then there was an Exalted March that was essentially ended in a single battle, and finally, in addition to the ten or so actual marches, there are a total of three known Exalted Marches that were considered or threatened, but never actually started, most of which are a result of potential in-game choices throughout the series. So, first we'll go over the traditionally canon marches, then we'll go over the totally not an Exalted March, as well as the marches that thankfully never were. War is bad, guys. Don't do it on purpose. The war that is universally considered history's first exalted march was actually the war that Andraste waged with the nation of Tevinter, before the Chantry was even a twinkle in anyone's eye. Andraste is the prophet and or patron saint of the Chantry. See our video on the Chantry here and in the description for more details. But for our purposes, the basic information you need to know is, she was a mighty warrior and wife to a powerful war chief named Mafarath, belonging to some barbarian tribes in southern Thetis. She was the first to teach of the Maker as a creator deity and was a powerfully magnetic personality, attracting followers and gaining recognition far outstripping that of any other name outside of Tevinter during her time. In those days, the Tevinter Empire stretched across most of the continent. However, in the wake of the First Blight, a world-threatening catastrophe that pops up every few centuries – see our video on Blights here and below for more info – both the Tevinter Empire and the physical continent of Thetis were in shambles. Tevinter was built on the backs of slaves, and as the Empire weakened, pockets of trodden-down freemen and rebellious slaves alike revolted, taking up arms and, in some cases, banding together. The most powerful of these movements were the armies of Andraste and Mafarath. Mafarath's fury in battle, and perhaps surprisingly tactical acumen, combined with Andraste's charisma and unwavering zeal, drew hundreds to their ranks as they slowly cut their way from what would become modern-day Ferelden up toward Tevinter's capital city. In addition to being aided by their fellow barbarians, Andraste's ranks were swelled by escaped slaves. The most notable of these former slaves were a large band of elves, led by an elf named Shartan, who would later be named Andraste's personal champion for his valor on the field. These elves joined Andraste's cause in the hopes of bringing freedom to all of their people and were indispensable in several of their victories. Andraste's forces cut swiftly and easily through Tevinter's furthest outpost. Their travels and victories were aided by horrific natural disasters occurring in the wake of the First Blight that almost always turned events in Andraste's favor, which many took as a sign of the truth of the Maker's divinity and, by extension, Andraste's cause. Their hardest won victory came once they had finally fought their way deep into Tevinter territory, where Tevinter's power was actually consolidated. Andraste's forces won the day, but with terrible losses. However, the fact that this battle was won against absolutely overwhelming odds was taken as another sign, and all in the camp knew that there was nothing to stop Andraste's march on the capital, which was now well within their reach. However, at that point, Andraste was betrayed to the Devinter Imperium by Mafrath. Sources disagree on why, see our Chantry video for details, but the fact is that secretly, Mafrath gave Andraste over to Devinter. Devinter's ruler held a public execution for Andraste, who was essentially the Empire's most wanted at that point. 
She was to be burned alive, a painful, slow, and agonizing death for anyone. It is said that Shartan and his elves stormed the execution to try and save Andraste, but were cut down to the last man, and in the meantime, something about Andraste stirred to Vinter's ruler, who cut her suffering short by stabbing her through the heart himself. In the aftermath, Maferath was given control of much of southern Thetis, which was divided up and would become several of the modern nations. Of particular note for our purposes today, for their indispensable services, the elves were given a homeland of their own called the Dales, and one of Maferath's sons would help found the nation of Orle. In the wake of Andraste's death, Andrastean cults popped up all over Thetis, including in Tevinter. In fact, several years later, Tevinter's ruler, the same one who put a blade through Andraste's heart, declared Andrasteanism to be the state religion of Tevinter, outing Maferath's part in her death, which led to much chaos and Maferath's eventual death. Despite this, years later, one of these cults would be formed into the Chantry, headquartered in the heart of Orle, and would eventually spread across all of Thetis. The second Exalted March, which was the first actually called for by the Chantry, came nearly 200 years later. Orle and the Dales, neighboring countries, had found their relations slowly souring over the intervening centuries. The actual reasons for this bad blood are technically lost to time, but the history shows that the short version is that both countries handled diplomacy with their neighbors very badly. The elves had long believed that they had lost their immortality by coexisting with the other races, and so took the opportunity of having their own nation again to become very isolationist, hoping that by minimizing their contact with outsiders, they could reclaim their longer lifespan. They rejected trade with other nations, and as they had their own pantheon of gods, rebuffed all Chantry missionaries who came to their doors. And when the Chantry sent Templars to make them listen, most Templars never returned. Add to this the rumors in Orlesian border towns of elves abducting people for sacrifice to their gods, and the fact that during the Second Blight it is claimed that the elves stood by and did nothing to help Orle, and eventually tensions rose to the breaking point. A misunderstanding resulted in an elven attack on an Orlesian border town, and in response, Orle went to war with the Dales. But an exalted march wasn't called for until about a year later, by which time the elves of the Dales had cut through much of Orle. Only Orlesian soldiers fought in this particular march, however, Templars from across the continent did come to the aid of their Orlesian Chantry brethren in the fight. The war lasted about ten years, and it was brutal, with the elves getting so far as to take the capital of Orle, before the Exalted March's forces pushed them back so far as to take the elven capital. The final battle of the war ended in an Orlesian Chantry victory. In the aftermath, Orle sacked the entirety of the Dales, conquering the territory and absorbing the Dales into the Orlesian Empire. By decree of the Chantry, the displaced elves were, by law, to be allowed to live in any country or town they wished as long as they renounced their elven gods and paid homage to the Maker, leading to the split between city elves and alienages and the nomadic Dalish elves seen in the game's modern day. See our video on elves here and below. The next and briefest Exalted March occurred just a little over 20 years later. The Free Marches are a series of independent city-states whose collective territory borders to Vinter. The lord of one particular city-state, called Starkhaven, had allied with Tevinter and tried for years to conquer other city-states and consolidate power within the region with no success. Finally, seeming to run out of patience with his incompetence, Tevinter forces betrayed the lord of Starkhaven and took it over, finally giving them a foothold in the region. The Chantry, not wanting to see Tevinter gain territory again, considering the nation's history, called for an exalted march to free Starkhaven from Tevinter control, and the nations answered. The battle for Starkhaven was brutal but swift, and Tevinter was forced to relinquish control of the city-state, which was one of many instances that eventually led to a break between the Chantries headquartered in Orle and in Tevinter. Originally a single religion, with only a few but very important differences in doctrine, the Chantry and Tevinter eventually broke with the rest of the Chantry, later being called the Imperial Chantry to differentiate it from the proper Orlesian Chantry. Much of the world still looked upon Tevinter poorly thanks to its conquerous history, while the two Chantries didn't get along at all. Things went so far as for the Imperial Chantry to declare a holy holiday celebrating the death of the Orlesian Chantry's leader, while the Orlesian Chantry dubbed an entire age of history black as a smear against the Tevinter Chantry. All of these events, plus actual political turmoil with Tevinter itself, eventually led to the Chantry calling not one, but four separate exalted marches against Tevinter and the Imperial Chantry over the course of a 70-year period. While some of these marches were more successful than others, not a single march ever managed to take Tevinter's capital, and thus, 
Each march eventually ended in the defeat of the Chantry's forces. Some theorize that more marches would have been called if the Fourth Blight hadn't begun just two years after the last Exalted March. In a move that no one has any right to defame, as a response to 70 years of war on their country, Tevinter opted to nurse its wounds and defend its own borders during the Blight, refusing to lend aid to any of its neighbors who'd all been involved in one or more of the Exalted Marches against Tevinter. The last three Exalted Marches were called about 200 years later over the course of a roughly 50-year period, all against the Canari. The Canari people first landed on Thetis around 100 years before the Chantry began calling these last three Exalted Marches, and in that time, the Canari had conquered huge swaths of Thetis, with individual countries slowly falling beneath the Canari onslaught left and right, with little to no true coordinated resistance between Thetis' nations until shortly before the Exalted Marches were called. It is telling just how overwhelming the Canari threat was that for the first, and so far last, time in history, the Imperial and Orlesian Chantries worked together during these last three marches. Each march was called with a specific goal in mind. The first was to recapture a northern country with significant naval importance and was a successful march. The second march, called nearly 30 years later, was intended to retake to Venter territory the Canari used as a staging point for attacks on the rest of the continent, and was a bloody failure, resulting in the Canari taking far more territory than they'd had to start with. Three years after that, the final Exalted March was called, and it would be the final series of conflicts in the war with the Canari. The final result was that the Canari were barely pushed out of most of Thetis. Every country except for Tevinter then signed a peace accord with the Canari, all parties promising to end hostilities for the foreseeable future. The nation of Tevinter, who lives right on the Canari's doorstep, has continued hostilities with the Canari to the present day of the games some 160 years later. Which brings us to the not-Crusades and the Crusades that never were. Between the first and second Exalted Marches, the Emperor of Orlais, who founded the Orlesian Chantry, went on a series of expansionary wars, conquering vast swaths of territory with the full intent of spreading not only Orlesian rule, but more importantly to him, the word of the Maker and the light of the Chantry. He fully believed himself to be on a mission from the Maker himself, and indeed, though not through these conquests, he would eventually be responsible for spreading the Chantry to much of Thetis. Though not counted among the official Exalted Marches, these initial expansionary conquests are sometimes included among the Marches. As far as we can tell, especially considering the apparent circumstances of the first two Marches compared to all those that came later, the only reason we can come up with for this Emperor's Wars not being included included amongst the ranks of Exalted Marches is that they were entirely called for and instigated by the Emperor himself, with no call or decree made by the Chantry, who simply followed the Emperor's lead instead. Regarding Exalted Marches that were averted or died in the planning stages, during the epilogue of Dragon Age Origins, the first Dragon Age game, two choices made by the player can lead to the Chantry considering launching an Exalted March. Over the course of the game, the player may choose to help establish a Chantry branch in Orzammar, the Dwarven capital. The Dwarves do not generally worship the Maker, and the establishment of this Chantry branch eventually leads to bloodshed, leading to some in the Chantry to call for an exalted march on the Dwarves. Similarly, the player may choose to help a Dwarf who, as a species, are generally considered incapable of wielding magic, to establish a Circle of Magi in Orzammar outside of Chantry jurisdiction. This similarly causes some to call for a march on Orzammar. To the best of our knowledge, however, neither of these choices actually leads to an exalted march on the dwarves. In Dragon Age 2, events within the game eventually lead to the city in which Dragon Age 2 takes places, leadership, being taken over by the leader of the local Chantry Templar branch. Tensions between the local Templars and mages, always strained in the city, rise to a point that the Chantry's leadership sends an agent to determine whether or not an exalted march would be required to stabilize things. But ultimately, no such march is called. Finally, there was a cancelled DLC for Dragon Age 2 that was entitled Exalted March, which reportedly would have dealt with Kunari once again making moves on Thetis, with the player getting wrapped up in the center of things. Details on this DLC are obviously sparse, though we do know a handful of elements made it into the next Dragon Age game, 
But between the DLC falling through and the players stopping the Chantry from making moves on their allies, no Exalted March has been called in Thetis for the last 160 years or so. Which we consider a win. After all, who needs another war? And that's basically the Exalted Marches, Crusades of the Dragon Age verse. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like and share it with someone you might like it. If you have ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, do like his shadow and let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to see our Let's Plays, follow the link in the description and subscribe to our Let's Play channel. In the meantime, this has been True, True Masters, Masters and Morons, signing off.